Hi, welcome to the first Atlas 25 live event. We are here with Peter Yenny. He was the first spokesperson of the Atlas collaboration and he served the as in that position for well over a decade. In fact, uh, Peter presented the Atlas Letter of Intent to the LHC Experiments Committee on the 1st of October 1992, and that's the anniversary we're celebrating today. So thank you for joining us, Peter. Welcome, Katarina. <laughs> thank you. Um, so let's go back to those early days of Atlas and the LHC. Um, what was the motivation for the LHC project? Well. Already in the late 70s, but then in particular in the early uh, 80s, we were very keen to nail down the last missing piece, and the essential piece of the standard model of particle physics, the Higgs boson. So um, clearly this was one of the, the primary motivation, was a benchmark so to, to say the Higgs boson, but there was also already a lot of excitement about extending the standard model to include supersymmetry, and uh, so this was then a second important ingredient why we were so excited about the project, but also we were hoping, and we are still hoping, that there is something not foreseen by theory beyond uh, beyond what has been foreseen and which would, uh, of course, open completely new view and new understanding of uh, fundamental physics. Mm -hmm. So, I would say these three things. The Higgs boson, looking for supersymmetry, but then the big hope to find uh, something unexpected, exploring the high energy limit of accelerators. Mm -hmm. So that was the motivation for the collider and then I imagine as part of that experiments grew alongside the... Uh, yeah, the so there was uh, a very famous workshop in 1984 mm -hmm. in Lausanne where exper experimentalists, theorists and machine people uh, came together and talking now for the experimentalists, we were of course thinking what kind of experiment you would like to do at this energy frontier. And uh, slowly out of uh, discussions grew the ideas to have detectors like uh, ATLAS or like uh, CMS as they are now running at, at the LHC. These were, both of these are general purpose detectors, mm -hmm. having all the possible uh, physics in mind we could hope for at the LHC. Could you expand more on what a general purpose detector Yeah, is? so a general purpose detector, well, I could say it this way, clearly had to be performant to find the Higgs boson if it exists, mm -hmm. had to be performant to find the supersymmetry if it exists, and uh, open as many as possible other directions into new physics. So it's an experiment which has, well, some benchmark uh, reactions where it should be good to find them, but also being uh, general enough to find something unexpected. So this is very different from an experiment where some very specific question is asked and only uh, tailored to answer yeah. this question. So, f moving from the 80s into the 90s, how did the Atlas collaboration become a become a collaboration? How did they? How did you form? Yeah. Well, so historically, there were in the late uh, 80s there were what we call now proto collaborations built. A few of them, and uh, in fact, four of such proto-collaborations uh, presented their ideas and uh, their preparatory work at the workshop in Evian, Evian Les Bains. This was in March 92. And uh, it was clear that there was not, will not be enough uh, resources 
financial but also human to have four experiments mm -hmm. at, the, at the LHC. So, in fact, two of these experiments, they use the special configuration for the magnets, the toroid configuration, and uh, then just after the Evian meeting, the two groups came together, uh, joining forces, and proposed then, in a letter of intent, in fact, what we know now as ATLAS. Yeah. So that was really the birth. The birth was out of two uh, proto collaborations. So that letter of intent is, as you mentioned, what we're celebrating today, that presentation in 92. Um, and as you said, one of the key elements is this toroidal magnet system. Um, what factors do you think led to kind of that inclusion of because it was really unique. Yeah, it, it, yes, but uh, it was, in our mind, a very logical choice mm -hmm. at the Hadron Collider because it allowed us to have a good uh, momentum resolution for the, for the muons over a large angular range, to be more precise, I should say, pseudo-rapidity range. Mm -hmm. It also allowed us to make a detector where we have a region without magnetic field where we can put uh, a very performant calorimetry. And, uh, well, we had the desire to make a good uh, jet hadronic calorimeter, mm -hmm. and uh, this configuration allowed us Large. to do so. So one of the extraordinary things about the Atlas collaboration is its global scale. So it's now almost 200 institutions from almost every continent, but how? what was it like developing that collaboration and getting so many different nationalities and countries on board? Well, I, I think that was one of the very exciting parts of uh, being a spokesperson and being able to help a little bit uh, this uh, happening, actually. I think the, the collaboration has, has grown from something like uh, at the letter of intent some 88 institutions has more than doubled mm -hmm. uh, and has by that become much stronger in human human uh, resources intellectual contributions it was not just a, a linear growing there were moments when for example after the uh, closure of the SSC in in uh, 93 there was a strong American part coming to Atlas uh, right from the beginning we had a good collaboration with uh, teams from the former Eastern Bloc also mm -hmm. uh, they made really fantastic contributions to the detector we have a very strong partnership uh, with, developed with uh, Japan, Canada, and many other places. And I was particularly proud that also uh, contributions and uh, collaborators from countries like uh, Latin America, mm -hmm. some from Africa, and so on now. Uh, have joined, mm -hmm. some of them a little bit later, but... Uh, so what was it like for you to serve um, this l large collaboration for that, for that length of time? Well, it was certainly an exciting time that I can, can say. Uh, the, the, the years did fly by very, very quickly. But I must also say, of course, at time it was uh, rather stressful because mm -hmm. to um, find uh, the the resources. Uh, that was not an easy game, and of course uh, the experiment had to be within a certain <coughs> financial envelope, uh, within what our uh, collaboration partners, the funding agencies, were uh, able to come up with. So we had sometimes to make compromises mm -hmm. for the detector. Also, when we uh, came together in, in 92 to form ATLAS, uh, there were some sub-components of the detector which were not yet 
uh, defined. We had mm -hmm. some options, so we had to make a uh, agreement in a way to understand what do we want to build to have everybody on board mm -hmm. and um, so that was was quite uh, intense intense mm -hmm. years until uh, we then went into construction mm -hmm. and of course it was also very exciting to uh, welcome partners all over the world in mm -hmm. the in the collaboration and um, I find it also maybe the most exciting thing is to see all the the young people now working on this detector, uh, making uh, marvelous physics with it. So, so it was a good time. Were there any kind of looking back on the past quarter century? Are there any moments that really stand out for you in retrospect as being being well, milestones? Well, of course, to when we recorded the first collision, that mm -hmm. was uh, that was a great great moment for me, and uh, obviously also then a couple of years later when indeed the Higgs boson was uh, was found, that that was very nice. Uh, there were other milestones which uh, which were more difficult to digest. For example, uh, just after the startup of injecting single beams in the LHC in uh, 2008 when there was the incident at mm. the machine that was a rather uh, rather sad moment I mean, uh, uh, yeah so there were but there were also milestones uh, before which were were difficult because even so the detector thanks to the enormous effort from all the funding partners or so uh, was uh, built within reasonable slight but reasonable uh, over costs nevertheless it was not easy to get this uh, approved mm -hmm. by the resources review board mm -hmm. and uh, so there were there were also difficult moments at, at that time that was more in the years uh, typically 92 93 or so and everyone is kind of getting their feet. Yeah, yeah. but uh, what remains, of course, is now a, a beautiful experiment yeah. uh, producing physics. So, looking at what are you what are you looking forward to for the next uh, for the next years of Atlas? Well, I, I hope uh, to witness still some surprises mm -hmm. which uh, nature may have in store for us. Uh, clearly, I'm I was always excited about an experiment which could find supersymmetry if it's there. I still believe it's a, it's a beautiful theory which uh, at some level might exist and mm -hmm. that would be a, a great great moment if we would, would find it or maybe something completely unexpected. Uh, we have still to go a long way with Atlas. We have only maybe accumulated some 2-3% of the data, so there is still a lot to come. There's a lot to come. All right. Well, we'll leave it on that note. Um, there is also a lot to come for the Atlas 25 Facebook Live event, so make sure you stay tuned. We have a lot more sessions coming up, and we also want to hear from you. So if you have any questions, or even if you want to send us birthday wishes, please send those through on social media. We will be doing a live Q&A session at the end of the day.